All right, so the biggest question that I get that comes up over and over and over again is how do I be consistent? I'm struggling to stay consistent. That's what we're gonna cover in today's episode. Hey, what's up, my friend? Todd Falcone here. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about this one thing that I hear from people all the time. I'm struggling to stay consistent. And it's kind of crazy because if you're going to be successful, you kind of have to be consistent. You can't be like inconsistent and win in anything. Uh, so with, and, and let, me, let me just clarify something. How, how frequently, how do, how do I know that people say this or how much people say this? Like I literally, I poll my audience on an annual basis. I do an annual poll. I do quarterly polls with my coaching groups. And the one thing that's constantly blaring, blaring, blaring in my face is the struggle to stay consistent. So it needs to be covered, it needs to be discussed, it needs to be tackled, and I'm gonna do my best today to give you some directions, some routes to go in order to be more consistent. Like, look, I mean, look, every book that has probably ever been written on achieving success, you hear the word consistency. And so it's not like you don't know that, but it's crazy how many people struggle to stay consistent. They, they, just, they just don't show up. And I think I have some good reasons why. And if you understand why somebody is not being consistent, then you can understand it more and you can tackle it from the reasons why somebody is not showing up. And look, you can't win here, guys. If, if, you, if you're going to be in this game, if you're going to be in network marketing, most people who follow me are involved in network marketing, then you got to be able to show up and be consistent. And what are you being consistent at? Well, not just, oh, throwing up a Facebook Live. That's nice. And that might, might be helpful, but that's not going to help you. You're, you're not building a business on Facebook Lives. Having the most creative Instagram post is not going to build your business. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that and it's not going to be helpful, but it's not going to be the thing that builds your business. What you need to be consistent at is the fundamentals, the blocking and the tackling, recruiting, prospecting, inviting, exposing, presenting, customer acquisition, like drumming up business. That's the name of the game, period. I don't care what decade we're in, how much tools and technology are out there. The game of network marketing, in terms of the pure fundamentals of it, has never changed. It has never changed. People ask me all the time, oh, how, how has network marketing changed, Todd? And Because I've been doing this for 35 years. They're like, I'm like, uh, the business, I mean, it's kind of changed, but not a, not a whole lot. Very little, in fact. I mean, the fundamentals of what we do, we find a cool product that we dig, that we have, that we vibe with. Oh, I could share this with other people. There's a business here. Cool. I can make some money by bringing customers in and, and putting other, you know, I can recruit people and build a team. And I can earn a percentage on all the sales that they do. That's great. That's the name. That's what network marketing is almost by definition right there, right? So, but what has changed are the things that we use. Like, I, I mean, I used to do live opportunity presentations to a live audience. And now we've got, you know, streaming video or Zooms or whatever they are, you know, whatever we're doing uh, to, to present. So the, the, the tools and the technologies have changed, but the, uh, the, the, the fundamentals have not. So, so back to the fundamentals. So speaking of the fundamentals, if you're going to build this business, if you're going to be successful with this business, then you've got to be able to recruit. You've got to be able to prospect. You've got to be able to engage people in conversation. You've got to be able to invite Put, the, put them in front of information, get back to that person, follow up, address their questions, their concerns, take them through the enrollment process, sign them up, be able to start them, be able to launch them, be able to work with them, mentor them. These are things that you have to be good at. So you can't, you can't just sit there in an avoidance procedure mode all the time. So, you know, why don't, if we're, let's go back to why, why do people struggle to stay consistent? It, most of it is worth issues. It's like, oh, why, no, you know, why would, why would anybody follow me? I've never made any money before. 
Uh, you know, what if I screw up? What if, oh, I, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. What if they'd say yes and I've got the responsibility of like having to help them and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, you know, all the what ifs, like the what if it doesn't, what if I fail? What if I screw up? What if I bring them a bad deal? I don't want to bring a bad thing to my friend. I mean, they, maybe they're not going to be my friend anymore. I really like my friend. So there's a lot of reasons why people are inconsistent, okay? And most of it is wrapped around fear. And so if you look at, if you, it, 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 and look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you guys today that I know I've said before, but if, if, if in, in, I mean, if you're new, this is cool because it'd be the first time that you've heard it. But if you've heard me say this and you're still struggling to stay consistent, then freaking hear me today and do something about it. Like this whole, here, here's the way I look at it. Like, like for example, uh, first of all, I want you to think about something you're really exceptional at. Whatever that is, I'm not even talking about business. Maybe you're a great golfer. Maybe you're an exceptional skier. Maybe you're great at plants and gardening. Maybe you're great at woodworking or you're great at, I don't know, whatever you're great at. Everybody's great at something. How did you get good at it? And, and, and the thing that you're great at, do you, do you like scare? You don't shy away from it. Like, oh, I can't do it. I'm afraid. I'm not. You, you're like, I'll step into that. No problem because I'm good at it. So, so if you understand that, right. And, and the, the other thing is like, I'm not, a, I'm not at all a believer in this, this thing. I, I know I said it probably, tw I haven't said it for at least 20 years, but I know I did over 20 years ago. I, you know, I heard it somewhere and I repeat, I regurgitate, you know, you hear something and then you regurgitate it, which, you know, I've learned, I mean, I probably regurgitated some stupid stuff over the years. That's not true. Um, you know, you learn through experience, but like, oh, how you, how you do one thing is how you do everything. That's total BS. It's not true. Because you see people that are totally out of shape, fat, unhealthy, about to die, and they're billionaires. And then you see people that are incredibly ripped and in shape, but they can't, you know, they're just, they don't, they don't, they can't get to the business side of things or vice versa or any other things. I'm just using those, those, those examples. So no, how you do one thing is not at all how you do everything in your life, but this is true. How you get good at one thing is how you get good at everything. So if you think about the thing that we're, that I just planted your, your mind on that thing that you're really good at, like for me, I'm really good at skiing. I've skied for over 40 years. If I'm on skis, I'm, I, first of all, I love to go skiing cause I'm good at it. Duh. If I sucked at skiing, I probably wouldn't ski very much. It'd be, it wouldn't be that much fun for me because I suck at it, but I can ski any terrain, stormy, steep, cliff lines, whatever. It doesn't matter. Choppy conditions. I, it doesn't matter what it is. I can ski it because I'm good at it. I'm exceptional. I'm an expert skier. I've done it for over 40 years. And I didn't just boom. Oh, I'm a great skier one day. I over, I, there's a process, a process that I went through to, and it's the same process that you would get good at gardening or you would get it good at stock trading or that you would get good at piano or you would get good at woodworking or you would get good at anything. So if we understand that, and then we look at this correlation, this is the part that, that some of you guys have, have probably, especially my, my regulars, have probably heard me do this before. So, but it's important. Like I want you to, I want you to, if you, if you didn't act on it, now's the time. Okay. There is a direct correlation between how well you do something, how good you are at it and your confidence related to that activity. So if, if you suck at something, I'm like terrible, you have no confidence at it. Like I went snowmobiling a couple weeks ago and I've ridden motorcycles and I've ridden quads and, but I've, I mean, I haven't been on a snowmobile for 20 something years and I'm, so I have very little confidence on a snowmobile, even though I'm very confident on snow on skis, same thing with a snowboard. I'm not very, I have no confidence on a snowboard. So I'm like, you know, I'm trying to make moves on this. I, I felt, I, I mean, I tipped the, the snowmobile over literally in the first 15 seconds I was on it. And the thing's so freaking heavy. I couldn't even get the thing up by myself. I had to have my buddy come over and help me get the thing up. So, so I don't, I'm not like eager to go run. I can't wait to go snowmobiling again. Uh, because right now my, 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 my core competencies, my skills are extremely low. And so I have very low confidence. And so I want, I, I, I don't really, honestly, if I go snowmobiling again, I don't really care. I don't need to go do it because it's not, it's not that important to me. But like if winning in this business is that important to you, if succeeding in this business is that important to you, then you do need to go, okay, well, here's my skill level. Here's my core competency. And of course my confidence related to that is going to match 
my, my, skill and, my, my skills and my confidence are going to be around the same level. But if I increase my skill, my confidence is going to increase. If I increase my skill, my confidence is going to increase. And this is a confidence game. This is a confidence game on so many levels. You have to have confidence in the profession of network marketing, the business model that you're in. You have to have confidence in your company owners and the products that you have and the, the financial opportunity that it represents to you. You have to have confidence in all of those things. I mean, if you, because here's the thing, doubt is the greatest killer. It is the greatest killer. If you, if, 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 in fact, it's, I want you to think about this for a second. Some of you guys have been around the game for long enough to you know, be with a company, for example, and something happens and now it's seed of doubt is planted. They were late with checks or a week late with checks or they completely changed the product formulation and didn't tell you about it. And it tastes different. It looks different. It smells different. Uh, everything is different about it. And you're like, oh, man, wh well, why didn't they just tell us that, you know, we had, to, you know, or whatever. It could be anything. Uh, did did you have an increase in belief and conviction about that company or now you're like, well, I think I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait a little bit, wait and see, because now a seed of doubt has been planted. So we have to we have to understand how important confidence is, confidence at all levels, confidence in our corporate leaders, field leaders and then ourselves. Because we're the greatest variable. This is the one thing that we can control. This is a business where we control us. And so if, 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 if I'm in control of me uh, and I don't have any confidence, like, look, you don't see this today. You don't see, like, I had no confidence on stage. I had no confidence in front of a camera. I had no confidence prospecting when I first started. But I've been doing this for so long. And I've worked on getting good at it. That's the other thing is people, and this, this honestly it kind of bothers me. It's like people say all the time, man, I want to get good. I want to be good, great at this business. I'm like, cool, what are you doing to get good? And then it's like crickets. I'm like, dude, seriously? Like, what are you doing to get good? Well, I'm, sh I'm showing up for the Super Saturday training. So, okay, that's nice. I show up for the conference. Well, that's cool. I, you know, I, I do some prospecting. That's great. But, like, do you spend any time actually working on it? Like, developing your skill sets? Like, like, okay, when I started skiing, I took lessons for nine weeks for like seven years in a row, nine weeks in a row, nine Saturdays in a row. And I took, there was an all day lesson. And then I would practice the things that, that was being stem Christie or whatever the, you know, they don't even use that term anymore, more probably, but you know, an, hip angulation or what, whatever, like pole planting or what, whatever the things that needed to be. And I would practice and I would go do it and I would do it and I would pay attention. It's like, I wanted to be a good skier. And so uh, and over time I became a good skier over time. I became an exceptional skier, but, but it didn't happen overnight. No, nobody gets great. Nobody gets great at anything overnight. Okay. I mean, if, if you got a great voice and God gifted you with an amazing singing voice, maybe you got the, the natural talent where the, that, that voice can be developed. But even somebody who's got an amazing voice, first time they open up their mouth and they start using their diaphragm and they're, they're making sounds out of their mouth, it's not where they are, you know, 10 years later after they've developed their craft. And so, again, like if, you, if, 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 if you're going to be consistent, one for, one for sure way, this is like the big way is I'm going to work on my skills. I'm going to work on my skills. Okay. So most people, when we're, when we're talking about, Oh, I'm, I'm struggling to stay consistent. We all know what they're struggling to stay consistent at. They're struggling to stay consistent at prospecting, inviting, exposing, doing the things that, I mean, they can sit there and do a Facebook live and they can do a Twitter post and they can do or something like Twitter it, it, X post. They can do Instagrams. They can do all the stuff. They can TikTok their way to oblivion. But then it comes to like reaching out to somebody and executing an invite, whether it's on text or DM or phone or however you do it, they don't do it. And they don't do it because they're, they're like, what all the what ifs? Well, you, you won't worry about the what ifs from a skill standpoint if you just took the time to start developing your skill sets and working on your craft and going, I'm going to do everything I can to get as good as I possibly can and know that it's a journey, know that it's a process and that it's okay. It's not going to happen overnight. That's one thing. So my, my question to you is how much, if you're struggling to stay consistent, okay, how much time, dedicated time, are you putting aside every single week to work on your skill sets and look doing you know first of all uh, if somebody's struggling to stay consistent they're probably not being consistent that's because that's a, by definition they're not doing much so I prospect sporadically if that you can't get good you know every once in a while the other thing is like here, here let me say this real quick I'll kind of digress if I will if I may 
if, if you prospect today and then five days later you spend a little bit and two weeks after that you spend a little bit and a month after that you spend a little bit, you, even, even through the act of doing, you can't get good because there's so much time in between. You don't have like time behind the wheel. Like you need to have long time behind the wheel driving, you know, doing the thing, doing the do every single day. You can learn through those experiences, but those aren't, that's not the only way to learning. Like, like, okay, you got a guitar behind me. I could, I'm not going to play for you right now, but I, like if I picked up a guitar and the only thing I did was I just strummed the guitar and I took no guidance. I will never, re- I mean, eventually I'll figure out how to make a couple sounds and o- over in a long period of time, I can probably figure some stuff out. But like, maybe if I looked at a music book, maybe if I looked at an actual like standard chord progressions and maybe if I started to look at scales or whatever, I, I can, oh, maybe, oh, I hired a, 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 I hired a music teacher. I started looking at YouTube videos and then on the off times where I wasn't taking a, you know, working with my music teacher or watching videos, I was, I had my hands on the guitar. All those things are going to lead you to getting good. And the better you are, the higher your skill set, the more confidence you have, and you're not going to avoid it anymore. I mean, again, this is the big one. Okay. When it comes to being consistent is you got to work on you. You got to work on you. Okay. Uh, that's number one. Now there's, there's some other things. So for example, uh, you know, there's like, I like to spend a lot of time out in the woods, right? That's like my, my, my favorite spot. Uh, I was, I was uh, cutting down a bunch of trees at my river property last weekend. I love trees. They had to come down. They were dangerous for all you tree huggers out there. Um, and I was, somebody was at the property was helping us out cause we dropped like seven alder trees and that was just a ton of work. And he's like, do you go out in the woods by yourself? I'm like, yeah, I do. He goes like by yourself, like out in the woods. I'm like, yeah, I can go out in the woods by myself. Like with nobody around. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'll go backpack and be out nobody around or fishing or whatever. And there's nobody for miles. Uh, and, you know, I can do that, but you know, I actually prefer to have a bro with me or a buddy, you know, somebody with me, like some other able body person. I mean, God forbid I injured myself or whatever. It's not like I'm afraid of the dark, but you know, if, even if, okay, let's say I was afraid of the dark. If I was afraid of the dark, uh, if I had a person with me, I'm going to be less likely to be afraid of the dark because I have a person with me. I've surfed most of my life. There's a, 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 a place I used to surf in Northern California. That's very sharky. A guy got eaten there by a great white in 1983 eaten. Okay. And there have been multiple shark sightings at this, this spot. And it's a great wave. It's like one of the most versatile beach breaks in Northern California. And there have been many days where I would show up at six o'clock in the morning, offshore winds, five to six feet, perfect waves. I'm, I'm in a surfer's dream. And I'm sitting there in my car and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for some other guy to show up to paddle out. So I'm not the only one out there. So this, no, no, my, my, I had my mind as like the shark would have a smorgasbord. Like he could pick or choose rather than, oh, there's this one, one guy. Right. And so it was like, it was kind of like, honestly, a false sense of security. Like, and, and, and I would do that all the time where I, w- I would way rather be out in the water with, you don't want to be out in the water with 50 guys. Cause now it's crowded, but being out in the water with 10, 15 people, or just a couple other people, there's, there's some degree of safety there. You feel safer. Okay. So let's take that into network marketing for a second and your inability to be consistent. Why don't you grab a buddy that you can prospect with, that you can build with it. They could be in another company. even you just, Hey, you could build your company over there. I'll build my company over here and let's go. Let's support one another. Let's encourage one another. And I'll help you stay more active. You, you help me stay more active. We can feed off of one another. Not feeding on Cheetos on the couch watching movies all day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know two able-bodied individuals that have a desire to do more, to be better. Going, okay, we're going to commit. It's like, in fact, there's a, there's a term for it. There's, a, there's an actual term in, in running, like a running partner. What's a running partner? A running partner is a person that you run with. You go running with them. It's like I went up for a hike yesterday with my wife. She walks faster than I do. And like, we don't go on a slow walk ever. Like it's, it's a workout walk and her fast walk pace is just slightly more than my fast walk pace. So yesterday I was like, can we take it down like a half a notch? Cause I was like, I was on the verge of running. Like it's like as fast as you can walk without running. But if I was walking without her, if I was walking without her and I was doing the loop, like our little, you know, two mile loop around our neighborhood, uh, I would walk slower then she would walk if I was by myself. But so she causes me to up my game, if you will. 
to cause, she causes me to walk faster. Any hike that we go on, we w walk faster. I walk faster with her than I do with myself. I don't la dee da through the forest uh, slow, but I go at my fast pace. When I'm with her, I go at her fast pace. If you if you follow the drip, so if you're if you're really struggling to 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 get something done, being by yourself it is not helping you. And the whole, you know, look, the phrase that's been thrown around for network marketing for so many years, like, oh, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. I understand what that means, but we're by ourselves. We are solopreneurs. We are by ourselves most of the time. And, and, and it, for a lot of people, this is new. You, your whole life, you had bosses, teachers, parents, you know, relatives holding you accountable. And then you're here and there's, your sponsor is not there to hold you accountable. Like you have to either, you got to step up and have the desire to, to make this happen bad enough that you're going to show up without anybody else pushing you. Uh, but even, even then, I mean, I've been running accountability programs since 2008 because so many people struggle to stay consistent. And this 12 week deal that I do called 18, most of you guys are probably familiar with that is it helps people to to up their game, to stay in the game, to stay in motion, to develop new habits. And it's just, I mean, it's a game changer for people because of the, the elements at play. So if you think about it, like you, again, if you, you want to get good, I know you want to get good. Now, why wouldn't you want to get good? Why would you want to stay where you are? Like nobody wants to suck at network marketing. Okay. I sucked at network marketing when I started. Like I said, I was, you don't see it today because I ain't the same dude. But I was a stuttering, sweaty, fearful, nervous wreck. And, but I wanted success in this business. I saw it. It made sense to me. I was like, okay, cool. This would, this would be awesome if I could not have a boss and earn residual income and create something cool in my life and not have to have a job. And so all those, th all the things that were over there, I wanted bad enough to go, okay, I'm going to, I'm willing to go through the, the pains, if you will, the processes in order to, to get there. So again, today's, uh, today's episode is not the end all be all everything A to Z on, on becoming consistent. But the w one big thing, like, y are you working on it? Cause it, again, if you're not working on it, then that's going to be a problem. You're going to stay where you are. You need to have a, a specific method that you follow to get good. It's the same method that you used, same process that you used to get good at that one thing that we you know, brought up earlier. What are you really exceptional at? You did things to become exceptional. It's the same thing you're going to do here when it comes to prospecting, recruiting, and inviting, and all the things that we do in this business, or even like being on camera, for example. Uh, you know, A lot of people are afraid to be on camera. Well, you can learn to be good on camera. I mean, the first time a light flicked on in front of me, I was like, oh, I, that, there's a big giant lens in front of my face. I'm freaking out now. And I turned into a different person. It was like weird. I didn't even know what happened. But, you know, repeated exposure, uh, studying, you know, people on film, taking courses on it, understanding how to perform in front of a lens, you know, so it goes with anything, you guys. So that's number one. Number two is, look, a buddy is a good thing. You know, a, an accountability group is a great thing. I, you know, in fact, I'll have my assistant probably put a link in here for my upcoming uh, accountability program. Love to have you. Uh, this is, a, this is, I guarantee you, you'll do more by being part of my accountability program than you will without it. That's, that's an absolute rest assured guarantee. So the other thing is, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, uh, this is a mindset game. It's mostly mindset. Okay. It's how we feel about what we do. Okay. And so a lot of times people don't want to hear the mindset conversation, but if you're with a negative person or you're hanging out with negative people all the time, they're just sucking you dry, sucking every ounce of positive energy out of you. How can you possibly perform here? You can't. It's like you're hanging out with all these fun, motivated, excited people. And then you hang out with a bunch of downers. Oh, you rich yet? Oh, you millionaire yet? <laughs> How's your pyramid? <laughs> that was my college roommates. And I've, I've, I finally one day had enough and I was like, dude, get out. And I kicked him out of my apartment because I was so sick of the negativity. So yeah, sometimes we need, we need to, we need to protect our environment, you know, who our, our mental environment, like what are we reading? What are we watching? What are we listening to? Who are we listening to? Who are we paying attention to? Because the more we protect that and we feed ourselves good, solid mental nutrition for the mind, your mindset is going to be altered. It's you're going to have a different outlook. You're going to have a different perspective. You're going to have a perspective like, yeah, I got this. I can do this. So 
I can go deeper, but I'm not going to do that today. So, hey, if you're on my podcast, what's up, my audio people? Love you guys. Uh, on my YouTube channel, love you guys as well. All the details on this episode, other things, as well as learning about my accountability programs and other things to help you win in the game of network marketing are right here, toddfalcone.com forward slash episode 264. That's T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E dot com forward slash episode 264. We'll see you next time. Have an amazing day. We'll be right back.